What you are hearing are oscillations in the magnetic field of the comet 67PCG, which was detected by the space probe Rosetta. It is not clear what is exactly causing these changes, but scientists believe that it may come from the release of neutral particles into space, where they then become ionized. Here, these oscillations have been transformed into acoustic waves, and the frequencies have been increased by 10,000, so it is within the range of human hearing. While the Rosetta mission is without a doubt a great feat, there have been other missions that came before, undoubtedly helping in the development of the technology which led to Rosetta. Let's first take a look at some of the previous missions to comets. Here you see a picture with six comets that have been visited by spacecraft. What does it mean exactly to visit a comet? We know that with 67P, this means that the lander Philae actually made contact with the comet, where it still resides in the hopes that it can someday be brought back to life when it is close enough to the sun. With the comet 81P Wild 2, whose German pronunciation comes from the fact that it was discovered by a Swiss astronomer in 1978. NASA's spacecraft Stardust collected particle samples from the coma, as well as interstellar dust, which were successfully returned to Earth in 2006. This means that the spacecraft never made physical contact with a comet. This sample return mission has revealed a number of organic compounds on 81P. Launched in 2005, NASA's space probe Deep Impact was designed to make direct contact with the comet Temple 1, also known as 9P Temple. In 2005, the spacecraft released an impactor, which collided with the comet's nucleus. This showed that the comet was dustier and less icy than previously thought. At the moment of impact, the spacecraft Rosetta was 80 million kilometers away. Its cameras and spectroscopes determined the composition of the gas and dust cloud caused by the impact. Deep Impact went on to study Hartley 2 in 2010, which is the fifth and smallest comet ever to be visited by a spacecraft. Here you see an image taken by Deep Impact on November 2, 2010, from a distance of 3.7 million kilometers. Scientists believe that the CO2 ice within the comet dates back to the beginning of our solar system. There have been a series of missions to asteroids as well. Here are six images of Eros, aka 433 Eros, in its approximate natural color. These images were taken by the near Shoemaker probe. The probe actually landed on the 33-kilometer-long asteroid at the end of its mission in 2001 and remains there to this day. To the surprise of the controllers, the spacecraft was undamaged and operational after the landing at an estimated speed of 1.5 to 1.8 meters per second, thus becoming the first spacecraft to soft land on an asteroid. The last signals were received from it on February 28, 2001. JAXA, Japan's space agency, launched their probe Hayabusa in 2003 to examine the asteroid Itokawa. This was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission and the first probe designed to make physical contact with an asteroid. The asteroid is 535 meters long and with not enough mass to allow the probe to orbit. Hayabusa landed for 30 minutes in November 2005, scooped up samples, and returned to Earth on June 13, 2010. In this picture, on the right, you can see Hayabusa's shadow. In this animation, you can see how quickly we are discovering new asteroids. In the lower left, you can see the year, and the number next to it is the number of known asteroids. 
Exploration of comets and asteroids is important in that we will be able to unlock some of the mysteries of our universe. With asteroids, scientists hope to tap into resources that are scarce or will become scarce on Earth. And as we go further into space and begin to colonize, it will drastically cut down on costs to have resources nearby rather than having to ship everything from Earth. As Neil deGrasse Tyson once stated, the first trillionaire, not millionaire or billionaire, but trillionaire in the world will be the person who mines asteroids.